Hey everyone, welcome to Holly's Bookmark. I'm Holly. Today I'll be reviewing the, let's just call it B Season, not the B Season, B Season by Myla Goldberg. B Season is about a family of four, a mother, daughter, yeah, I mean that works, I guess, mother, daughter, father, son, that live in Pennsylvania and they're definitely a little messy although they don't know it yet. The son Aaron is really close with the father Saul and they connect through uh, Judaism spirituality and they play guitar together and Saul has his own like little office in their house and he always keeps it shut and you're not to disturb him and Aaron is kind of the only one who is allowed to kind of breach the office area. Eliza doesn't have that connection and since she's not allowed to disturb Saul and her brother she doesn't really get to go in there. It's kind of like this mythical place. I should note that Saul is a cantor. He has kind of taken Aaron under his wing to kind of teach him the ways of Judaism, spirituality, etc. Eliza, who I think is, I think is around 11 years old, um, isn't great at school. She's actually in one of the lower classes that doesn't get a lot of attention and all those kids in there need a little extra help basically. And then one day she ex does really well in a class spelling bee, which then um, in turn turns into a school spelling bee. And then she gets invited to regionals, I believe, a regional spelling bee. She doesn't know how to tell her father because she doesn't think that he'll be excited or interested and she doesn't want to breach the office door which is never open. Her and her brother I think are about five or six years apart and they used to be really close when they were kids but they're definitely have they're they're growing up and they're finding you know the age difference is starting to split them and they're at different points in their lives and they're definitely not as close as they used to be but Aaron drives Eliza to this regional spelling bee. The dad eventually does find out and is very excited and was like, why didn't you tell me you weirdo? <laughs> she excels at regionals and gets invited to nationals in DC. Saul's attention has flipped from Aaron to Eliza and this obviously throws Aaron for a loop. Now he is the one cut off from the office while Eliza and Saul are constantly studying for the national spelling bee. This gives Aaron a lot of time to question his spirituality and his relationship with Judaism and he is kind of trying to reach and talk to God in a way and he wants to explore other religions and see what he can find out. He tries Catholicism for one day and doesn't really seem to be into it. He's trying other spiritualities when one day in the park he is uh, talking to this dude and the guy is actually a part of a Hare Krishna I don't know what you would call it, a con <laughs> community? I actually, I should have done research. I don't know uh, what the, the gathering is called, like if it's called a temple or, you know, things like that. But he gets invited um, to come join them one day and he does and he's super into it and he's super into like the kind of like meditative and spiritualness of the Hare Krishnas but he's keeping a secret from his father who is super into Judaism like extremely so. So Aaron is hiding that this whole time. <laughs> Eliza and Saul go to nationals and she makes it pretty far but uh, makes it actually really far but doesn't win. Saul is a little overbearing when it's coming to the spelling bee. Uh, Eliza is definitely interested in it but he is like pressuring her a lot like get it right get it right and he sees something in her and you can tell because uh we switch to the internal thoughts of all four family members so you know you're bouncing you're bouncing around to everyone else so you're kind of seeing what they're thinking and Saul kept hinting that uh the spelling bee is bringing her closer to this other thing he wants her to do and you know it has something to do with Judaism uh but I wasn't quite sure where that was going for a long time, but he's like hinting it in his in his thinking. And I'm like, oh boy, where is he going? Because he, he really loves to put the pressure on his children when it comes to Judaism. And he's kind of a narcissist in that way. Like he just wants what he wants for his children and doesn't care what they want or what they think. And Eliza really just wants to please her parents and Aaron. So she's just kind of doing what her dad wants because she loves spending time with him because she never got that growing up. Eliza also has a very special connection with words. She can see them uh, in her mind and they are pictured in a certain way. And this is described throughout the book 
and it's what makes her a really good speller and Saul sees that in her and is all it's also another reason why he thinks she'll be good for this thing that he has planned for her later. I have been ignoring the mother in this book this whole time because she is kind of on her own. I feel like Aaron, Eliza, and Saul, they're all like intertwined. Like the father-dad relationship is breaking apart. Aaron's growing up and you know he's in high school and he's trying to figure himself out and his spirituality and what he wants to do that's beyond Judaism. Eliza is growing up and it's also her coming of age story and but she also just wants to please everybody. And then there's Miriam <laughs> who uh, by design and by her personality is not really connected in this inter twining family thing that is happening. She's there and she definitely <laughs> has her own struggles and drama with Saul, which I won't get into because it's not great and I don't think it's going to add anything to this. But when Miriam was a child, she got a kaleidoscope as a gift one year and she just loved all the perfect patterns it made and they gave her like this feeling, this really intense special feeling. One day she was laying in bed and she decided to name that feeling as Perfectamundo. This basically ends up running her life later, this Perfectamundo. For example, after she decided, you know, with the kaleidoscope and everything as a kid with her nanny, they were in some toy store and she saw this like rubber, you know, those basic small rubber pink bouncy balls. And there was one in this bucket that was perfect. It, it encapsulated perfect Mundo and it gave her that feeling. And she just ended up pocketing it and stealing it. Now, she even says like, of course, I could have asked my nanny to buy it and she would have bought it right away. Like we weren't struggling or anything, <laughs> but it was like her secret. So this ends up going on and on throughout her adulthood where it's turned into like, she goes into a department store and just walks around. And then she has this feeling that tugs her places and wherever it tugs her, it'll tug her to an object and she'll steal that object. And these objects don't have any like meaning to her. It's not like she takes them home and worship, you know, worships them or anything or decorates or wears because sometimes they are like a scarf or something. She ends up putting it away. And that's something I'm not going to talk about either because it's, it's a total spoiler <laughs> what happens with all this stuff. But this just keeps tumbling, tumbling out of control where um, it gets to a point when Saul and Eliza are in Washington, D.C. and she has more free time. She ends up driving and the Perfecta Mundo starts pulling her to people's houses where she starts breaking into houses and stealing objects in those houses that have that perfect mundo feeling. There's a lot of things that Miriam hides in this book and a lot of things that uh, come out <laughs> from all that hiding at the end of the book. Miriam is a very stoic person. She seems very robotic and she, I don't even know if she loves any of her family members truly, like maybe, maybe deep down, but she's definitely not that kind of person. Like she shouldn't have gotten married and she shouldn't have had children because that's not the way she functions or the way she thinks. She's very analytical and doesn't need people like that. But because, you know, society and, and you know, her saying, maybe I do need this, maybe this is what I should be doing. Uh, that's why she ends up marrying Saul and Saul in turn kind of ends up marrying her because she is very studious and serious and he thinks that will keep him on track while he's trying to figure out Jewish mysticism and study that. And he thinks that being with her will make him a better studier and will bring him, make him more prosperous. Once Saul and Eliza get back from Washington DC, he presents her with some books, a beginning book kind of, I guess, that he translated himself about Jewish mysticism, 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 that's the word. He thinks Eliza will really grab onto it by the way she pictures words because a lot of this mysticism has to do with words and chanting and visualizing words and being able to feel words. And that's everything that Eliza can do basically when she's spelling. And so this kind of meditation mysticism thing comes very natural for her. I found the Jewish mysticism part very tedious. Actually, I found this whole book kind of tedious. It's very dense in a way. It's not even that big. Like it's not a long book, but it took me a while to get through. And yeah, the 
the mysticism part on Eliza's and was just, it was really long and it was very, very descriptive. I would say if you are interested in Jewish mysticism and <laughs> kind of want a fictional easy way to kind of learn about it, this book is actually really good for that. I knew nothing about this, so I was definitely learning, but it was also like reading a textbook sometimes in a way where I was just like, I I don't know, can can this be a little simpler for me, the 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 dum dum who doesn't really understand what's going on? I just found that the uh, Hare Krishna and Aaron's part of him going through his own spirituality a lot easier to understand and digest versus uh, Eliza's Jewish mysticism plot. I mean, this family's a mess, basically. Like I said, they shouldn't have gone together. They shouldn't have had children, really. There's some narcissism happening. There's like straight up ignoring your children happening. The children themselves have no social life and some even get sometimes they even get bullied. It's, it's, it's sad and the, and the parents can't take a step away from themselves to help their kids. I, I, I ended up only caring about like the Miriam plot and the Aaron plot mostly because they were just frankly the most interesting. Um, I also was actually into, interested in the spelling bee plot of this book, which ends up only being like the first quarter or first third of the book. And then it just turns into family drama and spirituality. So I think I got too attached to the spelling bee aspect of this book. And then it was hard for me to break away when Eliza started going into spirituality. For Aaron, I kind of understood it because his father had turned his back on him and his father kind of represented Judaism to Aaron. And so when his father turned his back, it's almost like Judaism turned his back and he was like, there's other things out there that I need to explore. And I thought that was interesting. I give the B season two stars. I am on a freaking roll with two and three star books right now. And I know it seems like I will never give a book a good review, but I promise you, uh, the next two books I read, I did enjoy. So I'm not just a two star person, I swear. <laughs> Again, it was just dense, even though it's thin. It kind of just spiraled into something that I don't even know what was going on in the end with the meditation and the falling apart of the family and everyone spiraling out of control. It sounds interesting when I'm describing it, but reading about it in this form was just this is what that's what it felt like. This is just a love the Mirian and Aaron plot though. Okay, some quick final stats. The B season was published in 2000. It's general fiction literature. It's set in Pennsylvania, USA, and it is 274 pages. Thank you for hanging out with me while I review the B season. I hope you'll join me next time when I review If on a Winter's Night, a Traveler. That one's a doozy. Bye.